Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, a very warm welcome for the live cast of this Mass as we celebrate during this octave of Christmas, the Feast of the Holy Family, this 26th of December, 2021. Our entrance antiphon. The shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. For our entrance hymn, join us in this beautiful one, once in Royal David's City. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Amen The first reading a reading from the first book of Samuel Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son, and called him Samuel, since, she said, I asked the Lord for him. When a year had gone by, the husband Elkanah went up again with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow. Hannah, however, did not go up, having said to her husband, not before the child is weaned. Then I will bring him and present him before the Lord, and he shall stay there forever. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, together with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and she brought him to the temple of the Lord at Shiloh, and the child was with them. They slaughtered the bull and the child's mother came to Eli. She said, If you please, my lord, as you live, my lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you, praying to the Lord. This is the child I prayed for, and the Lord granted me what I asked him. Now I make him over to the Lord for the whole of his life. He is made over to the Lord. There she left him for the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence, and whatever we ask Him, we shall receive, because we keep His commandments and live the kind of life He wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of His Son Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as He told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God, and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the Spirit that he has given us. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to welcome the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Every year the parents of Jesus used to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was twelve years old, they went up for the feast as usual. When they were on their way home after the feast, the boy Jesus stayed behind Jerusalem without his parents knowing it. They assumed he was with the caravan, and it was only after a day's journey that they went to look for him among their relations and acquaintances. When they failed to find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him everywhere. Three days later, they found him in the temple, sitting among the doctors, listening to them and asking them questions. And all those who heard him were astounded at his intelligence and his replies. They were overcome when they saw him. And his mother said to him, My child, why have you done this to us? See how worried your father and I have been looking for you. Why were you looking for me? He replied. Did you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? But they did not understand what he meant. He then went down with them and came to Nazareth and lived under the authority. His mother stopped all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, yesterday we celebrate the nativity of our Lord. And so the Holy Family is now complete. We have Joseph, Mary, and we have the baby Jesus. Indeed, having a child by the couple is what constitutes a family. 
And that's the reason why when God created humanity, His divine plan was that men and women, when they are married through procreation, the couple will share in the fruitful love of God. And for this reason, in the church, we are very clear that marriage is not just for companionship as what the world defines marriage today. This companionship must also be open to a fruitful love, which is a child. But my dear brothers and sisters, the paradox in the world today is that we have two extreme groups of people. Those on one end of the spectrum, the younger generation, they do not want to have any children at all in marriage because they think that children will be a burden for them. They want to focus on their career. They want freedom to do what they want. They want to travel. They want adventure. And so they are not willing to have children because they can hinder their career advancement or their way of life. And then we have the other spectrum of the situation. When there are some married couples, especially when they are not fertile, they will use every means to have a baby, going against the natural law of God, using artificial means like IVF and even surrogate motherhood. So on one end, we have women who would go through the extreme of sterilization and even abortion. And then on the other end, we have those who are desperate to have a child by all means. My dear brothers and sisters, it is important, therefore, that today's the scripture readings invites us to reflect on the role of children in the plan of God for humanity. If we see children just as a commodity, as a property, then we can do what we like with them. The trouble is, in the past, more than today, children have been seen in terms of having an a utilitarian function. In those days, people have children so that the children, when they grow up, will look after them when they are old. They can also continue the family name, the lineage of the family, which is very important to many cultures. And most of all, they can contribute to the labour, especially in those days, when many parents were farmers or even in doing business. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, children are no longer considered a financial investment for the family. In fact, today, even grown-up children, even when they are married, some of them are still dependent on the financial help of their parents. And today, our parents are well-educated. They have enough savings in CPF or in their accounts. They do not rely on their children to look after them. They are very comfortable, even without their children. And so, from this perspective, Children are redundant. What is the use of having children when we do not really need them to look after us? But this is where we fail to understand that children, they are gifts from God. It is not our property. 
It is not something to be used for ourselves. Children, they are gift from God to help us to share in His love and to help us to grow in capacity to love like God. Because the greater love we have in our hearts, the bigger the heart is, the greater the joy and happiness. This explains why when couples do not want to have children, when they could, their love is just between the husband and wife. My dear brothers and sisters, that love will be stifled. Because when the love is just between two persons and doesn't go beyond the two persons, that love will be stale. And not only that, they become possessive and insecure. And if one day the partner dies, their life has no more meaning, no more purpose. But I think in many cases, because they have no children, they get tired of each other. And sometimes, very often, they become so possessive that there is no love in the relationship anymore. You know, when your partner is very possessive of you, you cannot love because even if you love, it is a pretense because there is no freedom to love. Love must be free, must come from the heart. And how can we love when we need to grow in love? And that's why a child is given to a married couple so that they can grow in love because the child is the fruit of the love between the husband and the wife. And the child, therefore, is the common love, the personification, so to speak, of the love of their parents. And that is why both parents will direct their love to the child. And that's why I, very often I always tell married couples, the greatest gift you can give to your children is not to love your children first, is to love each other. Because if you love each other deeply, your child who looks at you will know that he is secure in love. And your love for each other will overflow to the child. But when husband and wife do not love each other, we cannot love the child adequately, no matter how much we try to give. It is still inadequate. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the gift of a child is to help us to grow in love, to go beyond ourselves. But the child does not only belong to us. The child also belongs to God. And this is where many of us fail to recognize this. Children, they are gift from God. In today's uh, second reading, John reminds us, think of the love the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore he does, he does not acknowledge us. Our task as parents is to help our children to recover their identity so that they know that they are not just our children, primarily they are children of God. Their life is not just on this earth. We need to give a definite, great future for our children. Not just to live for this life, but to live for eternal life. To be one with God. And therefore, as parents, we are actually, just like Joseph, looking after God's children. It's for this reason we have no right to abort our babies because the baby does not belong to you. It is not your baby. Ultimately, it's God's child. And only God is the one who is the author of life. But the trouble is today parents think the children are their property. 
If it is your property, of course, you can dispose of it if you do not want it. So, my dear brothers and sisters, the great task, therefore, of parents is to help their children to know their true identity in life so that they can live their life purposefully, with meaning, with purpose, with hope. But this child, my dear brothers and sisters, does not even belong to God only. That is the reason why it is interesting to take note. The child also belongs to the community. When God gives a child, it is not just for the parents to possess. The child ultimately that God gives to us is for the greater good of the community. And this is very important because today in the first reading, we have the story of Hannah. We are told that Hannah, she was sterile. And then she conceived. And then after she has weaned the child, she brought the child to the temple and left the child with Eli. And he, she told Eli, this is a child I prayed for. And the Lord has granted me what I asked him. Now I make him over to the Lord for the whole of his life. And he is made over to the Lord. There she left him for the Lord. Many of us, when we read these texts, we think, how could Hannah be so heartless to leave the child at the temple? She was not heartless. In fact, she was so much in love for the child. She loved the child so much that she would even sacrifice the child and to leave the child at the temple because she knew that the fulfillment of her child was to serve at the temple. She put the interest of the child before her own interest. And that was the case of Mary as well. When Jesus grew up at the age of 30, she, he had to leave home. Mary did not stop him because by then, Mary was already a widow. She could have told Jesus, look, who is going to look after me? It's just like many of our parents today, when their children want to join religious life, priestly life, they try to blackmail them emotionally. If you join, then who will look after me? We need you. But truly, my dear brothers and sisters, what is our task as parents? It is to help our children to find their vocation in life. Not my vocation. We do not impose our vocation on our children. But we must help them to discover what is God's plan for them. Unless they fulfill the plan of God, they can never be happy in life. We must not think that unless my child is a doctor, a lawyer, accountant, a professional, then the child will be happy and successful. That is not true. Your children can be very successful in the eyes of the world, can earn lots of money, but their life will be miserable because that is not their vocation. And they're living for themselves. That's why many parents, because they do not help their children, do not guide them in finding their real vocation in life. And every vocation is a vocation to love, it's a vocation to service, it's a vocation to community. It's never for ourselves only. But you see, the mentality of our parents is, oh, bring my child up, you will be successful, you got plenty of money, and then we can go traveling here and there. It's all about me, about myself, about my house, my car. It's not about, do we find fulfillment in serving people? This is where real fulfillment comes. Just by looking at ourselves, enjoying ourselves, life has no meaning. It is when we give ourselves. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, this is what we are invited to do as parents today, to help our children to find 
their true vocation in life, and they will be happy. Otherwise, my dear brothers and sisters, even if they are successful, they are not going to look after you. They will have no filial piety. The greatest gift you can give to your child, my dear parents, is the gift of faith, the gift of Jesus. If they love Jesus, you can be very sure, wherever they are, whichever vocation they join, they will be faithful to you. They will love you even much more. But if you don't give them Jesus, they love the world, and you will be out of place. Amen. Let us recite our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the faithful, the Holy Family stands as a model for us as we face the challenges and crises that threaten the stability, peace, and unity of family life. Let us ask the Lord to shape our families into units where Christ's love, compassion, forgiveness, justice, and peace reigned. And let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Spirit of God bind us together in His love, a love that unites us to God in a covenant of compassion and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our Pope Francis and our Archbishop William, that they continue to be filled with God's abundant grace and be strengthened in their vocation as shepherds of God's flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in crisis, in mourning, and those estranged, that Christ, our compassionate Lord, Grant them the grace and strength they need in the challenges of their trials and bring them healing and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children and young people, that they grow in the wisdom and grace of Christ within the safety and joy of loving families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who are without a home, the security and peace of family life be restored to them by the generosity of each of us gathered here. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own families, that we be witnesses of the sanctity of family life by striving to live selflessly and unconditionally the love of Christ and prioritizing work that serves God and our neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause to pray for our own intentions.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, hear the prayers of your family gathered here. Entrust our lives and families to your compassionate will and help us face challenges with the unwavering faith and obedience modeled by the Holy Family. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we embrace this in order process, let us pray the Atsumu Sancte Spiritus, which invites the Holy Spirit to be at work in us, so that we may be a community and a people of grace, particularly for this synodal journey. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, for ever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation. Humbling us, asking there through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awesome filled mystery, though invisible in His own divine nature, 
He has appeared visibly in ours and begotten before all ages. He has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and cause string humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy Holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and never cease to gather people to yourself. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith 
and charity. Your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, me your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, and the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be Our communion antiphon. Our God has appeared on the earth and lived among us. Act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, we have just celebrated your birth. You have assumed our humanity to be one of us and one with us. And you have placed yourself in the hands of Mary and Joseph forming the Holy Family. Lord Jesus, just as you journey with us in life and teach us how to live as a family, giving Mary and Joseph a greater capacity to grow in love, to be more and more like your Father who loved us unconditionally. So too, Lord Jesus, as I contemplate on your presence in my life, help me to love just as you have loved. Help couples who have children that through their love for their children, they will be able to find your love more and more. And may the children inspire our parents to love the way Mary and Joseph devoted their lives to you. Come to me, Lord Jesus, as I recognize your real presence in the bread and wine. Come and be born again in my heart. And so, give me the grace never to leave you so that you can truly make me your loving presence and a gift to others. Amen.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that of the thrills of this world we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today being the Feast of the Holy Family, I'd like to pray in a special way for all families. Those of you who are at home, I ask you to lay your hands on each other and together let us pray as a family. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus. We thank you for Mary and Joseph. Together, they form the Holy Family. They teach us how we can sanctify our lives by living as a family of communion, a family of love. Lord Jesus, you know very well that our families, that our marriages are going through many challenges in today's world. We know, Lord Jesus, you empathize with married couples who are trying to stay faithful and loving in marriage. For parents who are trying their best to raise up their children according to your divine plan. And yet, Lord Jesus, we recognize that with so many challenges, very often we have failed either as married couple or as parents. And even for our children who have not been faithful to their own parents, especially their elderly parents. So I ask you, Lord Jesus, that today, as we celebrate this feast of the Holy Family, help us to understand your plan for us, that you want, to, want us to share in divine love more and more, through the family that you have given to us. Lord Jesus, I pray for those parents who have difficulties with their children. Run our parents your consolation, your healing grace. They are not in control of all that happens in the children's life. And so I ask you, Lord, that you will console them Grant them peace, knowing that they have done their best according to their conscience. Lord Jesus, I pray for those married couples who are childless. Grant them, Lord Jesus, the gift of a child. And if that is not within your plan, I ask that you will grant the childless couple to give themselves in service, in love to the community, so that they can encounter a bigger family waiting for them. For those who are divorced, Lord Jesus, I pray that this animosity between the divorced couples will be healed by love. That these, those who are divorced will help their children to continue to love their separated parents, to give them the support so that the children would never feel that they have only one parent, but they still have both, even when the couples and the parents are separated. Lord Jesus, you know the pain, the struggles of parents, and so I ask you, Lord Jesus, to be with them. Heal them, Lord Jesus. Grant them the grace, and most of all, to surrender to your holy will. Grant them the wisdom to guide their children even though we are living in a very secular world, secular values, with information that are very non-life-giving. So I ask you, Lord Jesus, give our young children the grace to respond to your love. Help them to find their vocation in life so that together with their parents, they can fulfill your plan on earth and most of all, to find fulfillment. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Dear sisters and brothers, we want to thank you for your generous support of our parishes, our church organizations and charities over these difficult years, and each and every one of your contributions has certainly made a difference in helping the Archdiocese fulfill its mission of bringing God's love to those who need assistance here in Singapore and beyond. For your consideration and convenience, all your contributions can now be made online at catholic.sg slash offertory. We ask now our caring Blessed Mother to have pity on us sinners as we pray the Alma Redemptoris Mater. Thank you for worshipping with us today. Please continue to join us for our Mass live casts every day of the week at 12 noon and on Sundays at 10.30 in the morning. Please click on the subscribe button and the bell icon below so that we might share with you our latest Archdiocese videos. Have a blessed day, dear sisters and brothers, with your family and friends, and especially today being the Feast of the Holy Family. Have a blessed week ahead.
In Corinthians it says, There is one body, but it has many parts. But all its many parts make up one body. We are all part of one church, regardless of our parish, ministry, or the groups we are in. We are one. For we were all baptized by one spirit, clergy and laity, all co-responsible for the mission of the church. Like unleavened bread, we are all molded together by the same spirit to form one body. Like the many who came before us, each part called to a life of sacrifice. Each one of us is blessed with various gifts and talents to share freely, to reach out, love and support one another generously. Just like bread blessed and broken, our lives and the work of our hands are consecrated to be the living body of Christ. To be given and shared with all. To be a light to the world. We, His living body, are called to build strong evangelizing families to strengthen the fabric of the church. To raise a generation of young people passionately in love with Jesus. To continue to form the faith of generations and mold the future through Catholic education. We are to care for our elders and shepherds who have cared for us to grow and sustain our places of worship and infrastructures. And to encounter Jesus, be in communion with one another and be his witnesses to the world. We are the living body of Christ. Each one of us is a part of it. Together as one, we reflect him. Let us each strive to be vibrant, evangelizing and missionary Christians in our families, with our friends and in our communities. Let us respond as one body of Christ. Be givers of our time, talent and treasures. Let us pray, act and give to build the church today for tomorrow.